Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we're taking a look at the, I think it's pronounced Baranka, the CJRB knife. That's a little bit sort of like a cleaver type. It's uh, got a stonewash D2 blade, just a little bit of a belly all the way across it. And G10 handle scales, it's a liner lock flipper. Comes in, I think, three different colors. Or copper an actual copper not a copper color but actual copper handles I got mine through White Mountain Knives and uh, thank you White Mountain Knives for giving me a discount as a reviewer I appreciate it very very much let's put this thing on the tabletop and take a good close look at it the cell phone that I normally use is having problems recording audio so I have to use the one that doesn't have manual focus uh, I'm sorry when the focus bounces back and forth unfortunately at this point I cannot remedy that issue as usual one of the first things I do is I do a size comparison with the Ontario rat if we line those up there line the pivot points up very much the same size as an Ontario rat cutting edge is actually a little bit longer but that's just because it starts closer to the pivot and the handle is very much the same size too, although not quite as, uh, with this angle section back here, there's not as long of a main section there as it is on the Ontario Rat. You see the uh, stone wash here? The stone wash actually looks pretty good. Let's bring it a little closer to the camera here. Refocus this guy. There you go. You can see that stone wash finish on there. You can see a little bit of residue where I just wiped it off. Let's wipe it off again. There you go. You can see nice, consistent stone wash. We've got uh, a nice uh, area here for your thumb. If you want to put your rest your thumb in there for doing some cutting. And there's that front edge there. Some people might want to call that a Warncliffe tip. Some people want to call it reverse tanto. I don't like the re word reverse tanto for this because this edge isn't sharpened. And on a tanto, the angled section is sharpened. Uh, you can see the edge there once it focuses. I'm going to have to find a different solution to this. This just isn't working right. I'll just keep the uh, knife down here for most of it, and hopefully that'll work. Uh, the edge has been sharpened fairly well. And um, actually, let me give you just a little bit of video that I did um, when I had this underneath my microscope. So this is my first time using this microphone to overdub and I'm showing you the cutting edge of the knife. And on the left, well, closer to the left side of that edge, you can see it's the stone has cleared off the entire ink off the cutting edge across the entire bevel of it. And I'm gonna slide the uh, knife back and forth going to the left towards the sharpness trial. You can see right at the cutting edge, there's some ink left over there. So that means that it's been getting an increased angle of sharpness there so a higher degree of change and uh, now I'm going to slide it back the other way you can see I go back to full edge cleaning of the the ink and then here on the right hand side of that image you can see that there's ink not taken off all the way across the edge and that means it's a more shallow edge because it's still on the the heel of that bevel but the cutting edge has been cleaned off almost every knife that i sharpen this is this happens at the factory the edge angle changes as they move the knife acro across their sharpening stone you just can't get away with it so away from it you just can't get away from that so what you need to do is have a guided sharpening system where you can get the same angle all the way across and then you can get a really good edge. And of course, factories can't do that. If they did that, it would take them, you know, 10 times as long to sharpen every knife. And, uh, you know, it, that just won't do. So CJBC, CJRB has done a pretty good job sharpening this knife. It's a little more shallow angle than it should be, but they didn't do a bad job. So this isn't to complain, it's just to demonstrate something to you.
Okay, so it's not a big beef about this knife. It's just something that happens on all the knives that way uh, when they're sharpened at the factory. This thing was sharpened at a little less of an angle, a little steeper than I would like, but it's not terrible. Sharpener's choil on here is done very well, but you've got a big sharpener's choil, or is it a small forward choil? And that's one of my cons about this knife. I wish that this would be either a smaller sharpness choil or a larger forward choil because it's big enough that it tempts me to go up here, but then I'm putting my finger across a sharp edge and that's not smart. So either make it bigger or smaller is what I'm suggesting. Uh, now onto the flipper. The flipper's rounded over. There's no jimping on the flipper. It's got a hole drilled through it. It's smooth. And the very couple, first couple times I used it, I did slip over it with my finger. My finger just slipped over like that, but it didn't take long to get used to it at all. And now, you know, I can consistently easily make it deploy. No problem. It's got a very good detent. And uh, so it's not bad at all that way. I would like a little bit of jimping, but it's not a big deal. Uh, before I go on to the handle, the lockup. The lockup is very good on this knife. No blade plays side to side, up and down, nice and solid. The lock arm release. There's enough lock arm showing there that it's easy to get your thumb in there and disengage the lock. So that's a good thing. And I like how it's, you know, chamfered on there. Good job. It doesn't really need extra jimping. It works well. The rest of the handle here, We've got the widest section here. It's got the texture that you often see on G10. And then there's two steps down, both on the belly side and on the spine side. And then the last edge is just slightly rounded. It's actually very comfortable in hand. Uh, the grip of this handle feels quite good. The texture here offers enough grip and uh, the steps down there give a little bit of a texture and a look to it. That's nice and it's comfortable in hand for most grips. Uh, I can get my four fingers almost all the way in this section here. My pinky comes a little bit over. My hands are between large and extra large. Uh, this section here works good. If I wanna hold it a little bit further back, I put my pinky on there. And as you can see, I got a bit, of, bit more reach on the blade and I still get a secure grip. Or I can grip it up here and put my thumb up there. And I really would like to be able to do this. Other than this finger, that's a very comfortable grip on this knife, partly to do with, you know, this um, area right here on the spine. We've got a nice swedge cross here that I didn't mention before. Uh, the handle goes back and into a lanyard hole and the back spacer becomes the lanyard uh, tie-on section. So that's G10, good strong material. The pocket clip is right and left compatible. You got the holes there for it. Uh, it's a pretty good pocket clip. I like the spoon here on the end. It's easy to get your pocket started in there. But there's one little problem with this, and you can see it when I do that angle right there. Those screws are sticking up, and that leaves just a little bit of space for your denim right there. Let's demonstrate that with a pair of jeans. And this is starting to fall apart here just on this demo model. Uh, my pants all fall apart right there on the pocket from putting them on. So as you can see, like I said, it climbs over the denim really well, and then it gets caught right there, but you can work it through with just a little bit of sideways movement. So often what I do with a knife that's like this with the pocket clip, I start it here, get it on, and then I slide it back, back towards the end here, and then it goes all the way deep. And that's pretty good. Not bad at all. I would like it though if it was either a little bit larger out or if it had flush screws in there. Flush screws would be the optimal solution in my opinion because you don't want to make the pocket clip bigger because then it can get hot in the hand when you go to hold it. Okay, now let's take the knife apart. T8, we've got a screw head there and a screw head there, but we have a non-spinning pivot pin, which means on one side, if you put your tool in there, it's not gonna turn, it's just gonna move this tiny bit. That's all it moves. And if you try to go further, you're just gonna strip that out. 
So the other side that moves is this side. And so I can take that screw out. So we'll take this one out and then I'll take these two out and we'll be back on the tabletop in just a second. As you can see, there's no uh, skeletonizing on the liners. I wish they would have, that would save uh, some weight on here. But you can see here, I'll give you a close up of these, that is uh, ceramic balls for the, uh, wow, what, is, what are these things called? Ball bearings. And a ceramic detent ball there as well. Other than that, there's not much to see inside. You know, they put oil everywhere, even <laughs> on the uh, backspacer. And so that's pretty much all there is to the knife. Let's put it back together. Uh, one other thing, this screw has no thread locker on it. I would use VC3 thread mate because if you tighten it so tight that it's not going to move, well, then you're really locking the blade in place, at least on mine. If I put it to the tightness that I want it to be at so that I can move the blade, it's uh, fairly loose. And so VC3 thread mate will help it to not come loose. If you don't know what VC3 thread mate is, I've got a video on that and the link to it's right up in the corner right here right now. It's also down below. And now on with the rest of the video. Let's go over all of the specs on this knife right now. And while this is on the screen, I'll cover those things. The weight of this knife, 138 grams, 4.85 ounces. And that's because there's no skeletonizing back here on the handle liners at all. The sharpness from the factory, 115 bests. And that has to do with the fact that the angle of the edge is pretty shallow. The blade depth, that's this measurement. And I measured it uh, right up here, actually, where that changes. It's a little higher up than I usually measure it, but that's the measurement you get. 2.79 centimeters, 1.1 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, it's almost perfect, almost exactly what I look for. Half a millimeter thick, 19 and a half thousandths of an inch thick. You know, I usually say 20, but 19 and a half is better than 20 because that equals half a millimeter. <laughs> the grind angle on this knife, 14.7 degrees on this side where the CJRB is, and this side 17.1. And this is the side that I showed you on uh, the video where it changes the angle a little bit. The handle length, 11.87 centimeters, 4.67 inches. The grip area in here, up to the end of the handle, including this section, it's about 10 centimeters, right around four inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.34 centimeters. That's 0.518 of an inch, so just a tiny bit over half an inch. The handle depth, and uh, I measured it right back here, the knife depth, when it's closed, it's biggest right here, 3.94 centimeters, 1.55 inches. And I noticed I did that thing when I was talking. Sorry about that. It's just a habit of mine. I'm over 50. Uh, that's not going to stop. Sorry about that, guys. It's just the way I speak. Some of you who are listening on headphones sometimes uh, notice that I do that a, a bit. And uh, I don't mean to do it. Unfortunately, it's not something that's going to change easily. I do try to pay attention to it. And now for the total length of the knife, 20.66 centimeters, 8.13 inches. So pretty good. It's a full size folder. It's nice steel, well finished. And this is a good knife to do a lot of hard work. Uh, it's not designed for puncturing but just about anything else you want a knife to do, this knife is designed to do that well. How much does it cost? I got mine from White Mountain Knives. They listed at $39.99. You can get 10% off and then it's $35.99. So just under $36 for this knife, I think that's a good price. Uh, they have a copper version where the handle is made out of copper. That's $55.99. Take away 10%, $50.39 for that one. It's $62.99 Canadian. 
The copper one is $89.99 Canadian. And if you compare the US dollars at White Mountain Knives, instead of $62.99, it's $50.41 if you were to buy it at White Mountain Knives. And that's in Canadian dollars. So you save $12.50 Canadian if you buy it from White Mountain Knives. The copper one is almost $20 less in Canadian dollars. I buy all my knives, not all my knives, I buy the vast majority of my knives now in 2020 from White Mountain Knives and I have them shipped directly to my home here in Canada. And uh, the Border Services Agency hasn't stopped a single package of mine and I've ordered lots. Like I said, most of what I review. I didn't find links in Europe for this knife. If I do, I'll put them in the description section down below, but the American, the North American links, I've got them down below the video. Some unique features, things that I like. I like this little, I think it's brass, the ring here that's around the pivot pin. It's a nice little accent that looks good. Let's get it to focus up here again. You can see that brass ring in there. It just adds a little bit that looks really good. Um, I like the locking. I like the alignment. I didn't show you that before. The alignment's pretty much perfect. You know, it's well constructed, no blade play. Uh, action's good, the detent's good, the hand feels good. It's right and left compatible, that's good. People who want lanyards can have that back there, that's good. The people who don't want lanyards, you could easily sand that down and just have the end of the handle. There'd be a little bit of a negative space in there because it does go down just a little bit in there, but it still would be very comfortable in hand and maybe a little more comfortable for those reverse grips if you took that off, if you wanted to. All in all, it's a good knife. Uh, the cons, uh, pocket clip, I think I want uh, flush screws in there or maybe just a little more space, but it's not really that bad. It does work on my jeans quite well. I would prefer just a little bit of jimping on the flipper, but again, that's being quite picky. Uh, the biggest thing that I would want a design change on this is I'd like this choil either to be a full-size forward finger choil or a smaller sharpness choil. And that's the only design feature that uh, I wish there was just a slight change on. For the price, I totally recommend this knife. It looks good, feels good, and performs well. Thank you everyone for watching my video. It's almost the end of the month. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. Uh, that Patreon uh, funding will get processed soon. And uh, then we'll be able to pick a winner and see which one of you people, well, you're all guys, one of you guys will win a knife from this month. There's a pretty good selection of products that I've reviewed in this month. So I think that'll be a great, whoever the winner is, they're gonna be happy, I think. If you've ever won, are you happy? Tell me down in the description, in the comment section below. <laughs> If you'd like to become a supporter of this channel, $2 or more per month, it's really not all that much, but it does add up to helping me out quite a bit. Just look down below in the description section or go straight to patreon.com slash CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge and you'll find my Patreon page. So thank you everyone for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum not your thumb. Bye for now.